Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's public lecture hosted by NCAS, the National Capital Area Skeptics. I'm Scott Snell, NCAS president. Thanks for coming here today. Well, our speaker today is Dr. Rebecca Golden. She's director of research for Statistical Assessment Service, also known as STATS, a nonprofit, nonpartisan research organization affiliated with George Mason University. STAT's mission is to improve the quality of scientific and statistical information in public discourse and to act as a resource for journalists and policymakers on scientific issues and controversies. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Rebecca Gold. Thank you very much, and I apologize for changing the title. Um, I, I kind of like this title because I think statistics makes all of our heads spin, and I hear that a lot from the students that I work with and from the journalists that I work with. At the same time, a lot of us feel that with statistics we can spin news. And so what I wanted to do was kind of give you um, a bit of a broad overview of what I do, but also give you a little sense of some of the um, ideas behind it in statistics and in journalism as sort of how we get to uh, what we do. Um, and hopefully you'll find some of this kind of amusing because I think all of us um, read the news and sometimes wonder how should we figure out whether this means anything for my life or not. Um, a little bit of uh, a, a few words about myself. Um, I kind of grew up in the ivory tower, so to speak. I went to graduate school thinking I was going to be uh, a pure mathematician in the traditional sense, um, and that's what I did for, for many years. I uh, arrived at George Mason uh, and got tenure for my work in symplectic geometry, and I continue that work, and I think that mathematics is really, really beautiful. But when you're in the ivory tower, you really don't have much influence on Main Street, and I think that that was how I got really interested in how the discourse about mathematics and statistics and science kind of plays out in the public forum. Um, so I joined up with this organization called STATS. Um, right as STATS was joining George Mason, it was an independent nonprofit and then became affiliated with the university. And that's when I joined as a director of research. I have a fabulous editor there named Trevor Butterworth. And I, I like to say that the way we work together is he knows how to smell a rat and I know how to dissect a rat. So um, <laughs> that's how we kind of uh, started with this work. But uh, sometimes what we do is a little bit of gotcha work. Um, sort of pointing out when the media gets it wrong, but I, I like to emphasize and sort of the motion of the organization since I've joined it has really taken on a, some role of trying to really be there for journalists because I think part of what happens is they're on such tight deadlines with such small budgets and it's very difficult to get um, accurate quantitative um, analysis in there, especially if you're the science editor and in fact your degree is not in science, which is what happens a lot in journalism these days. So where does statistics come up in the news. Um, and I think most of you would say pretty much everywhere, but just to highlight some of these um, places, maybe I'll move over to this microphone as well. Am I coming out okay? Okay. Um, so economics and money, of course, is a clear place. Uh, crime, social behavior, this is kind of a more interesting one, but you see a lot of these kinds of studies. What, what happens if you put children in daycare? Is that good for them? Is that bad for them? What about um, uh, uh, people going to college? Are they having sex too early? Are they drinking too much? Are, are people doing more drugs or less drugs? Are they smoking more? Are they smoking less? These kinds of uh, things. Um, the budget, of course, which is under a lot of discussion now. Um, and uh, when you talk about the budget, one of the things that we see a lot is sort of a, um, uh, an inability to understand uh, orders of magnitude. So the difference between billions and trillions <laughs> of dollars. Um, sports, polls and opinion. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about polls and opinion today. That was very interesting with the election um, uh, two months ago. And uh, public health and health care is also something that we spend a tremendous amount of time thinking about, and I'll talk about quite a lot today. And then, of course, education, which is probably my favorite topic, and I will also give you some very nice examples here. So let me start out with a very um, general thing, and, and then I'm going to jump into more specific examples of kind of common misunderstandings that come up um, in the press. So the first is, what is the meaning of statistically significant? And just as a kind of um, a, a very vague description of what statistically significant means, uh, is that when, whenever you run a, let's suppose you run some study and you're trying to figure out whether a drug works or not, you need to 
figure out a way of saying, well, did it just work by accident or did it actually work? And so there's some standard agreements, let's say, in the community of what it means to judge whether it's possible that it just worked because you got lucky or whether it in fact would really work in the whole population. Um, and, and to give a, a, a better sense of what that means, well, actually, let me, let me save that. I think we'll come back to that. Causation versus correlation, this is another big one. If you see something like um, teenage girls who do yoga are less likely to have eating disorders, that's a very interesting statement. Does that mean that there is a correlation, which is to say that maybe people who have a better body image are more likely to do yoga? Or, um, or, or is it that there's some causal thing that actually doing yoga will improve your body image? So that's a, a very common misunderstanding in the press. Relative risk versus absolute risk. Um, my favorite example of the difference between this is that if I walk to work versus if I drive to work, the chance that a piano falls on my head, how would I describe that? Well, the absolute risk for this is extremely low, right? How likely is it I'd walk to work and somebody would drop a piano out of their window? But the relative risk compared to somebody who drives is quite high, OK? <laughs> <laughs> so, so relative risk is comparing two groups of people. Absolute risk is what is my risk of doing something. Um, and again, that can be very confused, and it's, it's an important one. If, if someone says that some behavior increases your chance of cancer by 300%, uh, that's scary. But if your chance of cancer is very, very small, it's less scary. So these are really two very important and very different concepts. Odds ratio versus relative risk, I won't spend too much time about that. Um, confounding factors, um, this is a really important one, which again, I, I'll get back to uh, later in the talk with some examples, but it's when you try to measure something statistically and you forget there's some factor that could really have influenced those results, and if you measured it, maybe you'd really see that influence. Um, Scales and orders of magnitude, that's something I mentioned earlier, and again, I'll give an example in which these orders of magnitude are really um, not explained. Margin of error, uh, this is a fabulous one that comes up quite a lot um, in talking about polls, for example. Um, and again, I, I think I'll have some time to talk more about margin of error uh, later in the talk. Um, consensus of scientists versus individual research results. This is probably my, my own personal uh, pet peeve about how a lot of health results are, pre are presented in the press. Um, somebody does a research study, and then a press release is presented to the public, and then journalists report on the press release, and we all get the information that, for example, um, caffeine intake will increase miscarriage rates. Um, but it's not put in the context of the many years of research that has been done on that topic. So the new study becomes the study that describes everything, and the consensus of scientific information about something is quite ignored. And this is really, really important when trying to understand toxins in our environment, for example. There may be hundreds of study about a topic. Um, one scientist might get a lot of attention, and if that scientist is very loud, then they'll get more attention than might be merited by the research alone. 